All right, guys, welcome back to the garage. Now, Wednesday morning, and uh, it's supposed to be a hot one today, up to 104 Fahrenheit, I believe, with the Humidex. So we've got out here a little bit early. It's 20 to 7, and we're going to do a couple hours of work before the workday starts, the real workday starts. So I figured we'd uh, do some small jobs, like uh, finish off the um, attachment of the passenger side rear fender. We have it all attached across the top, but I still need to do it here at the rear valence and at the B post. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that and we'll get that fully fitted. And then uh, I've got the bonnet uh, hinges to do. So we've got the bonnet on yesterday, just sitting here loosely. So we'll get the uh, bonnet hinges done and we'll get the hood aligned properly. So that's another uh, job that we need to do today. So uh, we'll just concentrate on doing small jobs, nothing too heavy lifting wise since it's going to be so hot um, later this afternoon uh, as I mentioned out here last night at 9 p.m. it was still 90 degrees Fahrenheit so it's going to be a hot day today I think they said it's supposed to be the hottest day of the year today anyway stop blabbing and we'll start working we'll pick up the tools and uh, find the fasteners and uh, we'll lay on our back under the car to fit those rear valence fasteners first moving forward to the B post I don't know if good. I showed you these, but uh, these are all the old fasteners that came out of the rear fenders. So you can see what they use, just an assortment of uh, and different sizes of uh, fasteners to get those rear fenders on initially. So just thought I'd give you a quick shot of those. Pretty ugly. All right, guys, just coming up to 9 a.m., so a couple hours in. And we've got that passenger side fender now bolted on. We've got the... Uh, trim piece in at the back. Now I may have to do a bit of adjustment on this based on where the light is going to fit. I might have to adjust that beading a little bit. But other than that it's bolted up solidly so we're happy with that. And I managed to get the uh, hinges on the bonnet and it needs a bit more adjustment but I'm kind of happy with uh, the way it initially fits. Um, the fender, I think, is going to have to go down a little bit, or the hood's going to have to come up. I think the fender's going to have to go down, so probably have to loosen that fender a bit and drop it. But other than that, it looks pretty good. I did get the um, the hinges on and the prop rods, if I can just lift this up. So there's the, bro the bonnet struts installed. So those are looking good. Engine bay is looking good. Needs a little bit of cleanup from uh, all the, the polish that I've slung around. I'm, you know, doing a little bit by bit. That'll be the final clean. I'll go through and I'll get every little bit of polish off it that I can see. But uh, yeah, so I'm happy with that. There's the, uh, the bonnet, underside. It looks pretty good. You can't really see those two areas, but I'm going to touch them up anyway. So there's what I meant about that hitting the rad cap so there's the rad cap and there's exactly where that was hitting so we'll fix that up you can actually even see the two little indents on top of the cap where it's made those impressions so that'll be easy to touch up it's not in a very visible spot so I'm happy about that so yeah that's looking good happy with that how many times can I say the word happy all right Let's go in. I got to do some real work and we'll get back out here later after work. Oh, one more thing before I do go in. I had mentioned that I was going to give you a little bit better shot of how the uh, bonnet stripe and the wing stripe matches up. So now that the bonnet is on and bolted up to the hinges, I'll give you a quick look of that. Now, don't mind the gaps. I haven't adjusted for gaps yet, so it's just sitting on here. The gaps haven't been adjusted. They're not bad, but they haven't been adjusted so with that warning here we go and just remember it still needs to be buffed a little along especially along the tops of the fender so the buffing is not complete but as far as the match is concerned you have a quick look here that is looking really good so I think you can probably see that so that looks fabulous and on the driver's side that's looking really good as well. So I'm happy the way that that turned out, considering that you know they're painted off the car, and uh, that was a little stressful, but it worked out in the end. Like I said, I don't recommend that everyone do it that way, but it uh, it worked for me. So, all right, that's it for now, guys. Can't wait to see that stripe out in the sunlight. We'll uh, get it out in the driveway at some point, but that's going to be a little while until that point. 
All right, gonna go in now. See you in a bit. All right, guys, back in the garage after the uh, real workday has ended. So we're on the uh, the overtime shift, let's say, and back on the TR250 project. I did manage to bring out the uh, the boot lid with me from the uh, living room dining room. So pretty much all the parts are cleared out of there now, with the exception of the doors and the front bumper. So it's nice to get the uh, living room and dining room cleared up of all these uh, body panels and Surrey backlights, etc looking much cleaner in there not that I use my living room and dining room anyway but it's nice to have them out of that area and back onto the car and way over there on my workbench we've got some more small parts in that we're gonna talk about and these have been supplied to me by Moss Motors who as you know are a big uh, sponsor and supporter of this channel so thanks again Moss for helping me in the restoration of my 1968 Triumph TR250 project so let's go and have a look what they've sent All right, me. So we have the uh, parts laid out here on the workbench. I also have some parts down here in a box that are going to be uh, waiting for the doors to be assembled. So these are pretty much are primarily door related parts. So we won't talk about these today. I'll just drag them out when I'm ready to start assembling the doors and we'll talk about those then. So the parts I have laid out here are more of an immediate nature. I can actually utilize these within the next uh, few days. So let me go through what I've got. So the first thing we're going to take a look at are the rear backup lights. So they've sent me a set of rear lights here with the beautiful glass beehive lenses. Uh, these are part number 544-060. Again, I'll put all the part numbers in the description field below. So we're going to be installing these on the rear of the car shortly. So in conjunction with these uh, rear reversing lights, there's also a plinth required that sits under the light. It's got a bit of an angle to it. So these are kind of a rubberized plinth. There are right and lefts of these. They are part number 544055 for the right hand. And here is the left hand, which is part number 544065. Reverse light. Plan. I've been wanting to get a new ignition wire set for some time as the ones on the car are kind of uh, a little bit ratty looking. So uh, Moss has sent me their cobalt ignition wire set. These are uh, kind of a purpley blue, so almost like a, ro a royal blue to match the color of the car. So we'll strip those old red wires off and we'll put these beautiful new cobalt wires on the car. These are part number 571-012 wire set ignition cobalt. I saw this next item on the uh, Moss catalog. This is part number 231-911 and I thought it was kind of a cool idea. So these are made by DEI. They're a numbered wire marker kit. So I kind of like to number my ignition wires and these ones come already obviously pre-numbered. I'm not going to need the number seven, but I'll need one through six. And basically they just shrink wrap over the ignition wire. And I'll show you that when we install it. And to go along with those ignition wires, I thought I would go ahead and uh, swap out uh, the uh, points for an electronic ignition. I'm a big fan of the uh, Petronix uh, electronic ignition products. I've got them in both my TR6 and TR3. Um, this is part number 543-041. I'm probably not going to swap this out initially. I'll probably wait until I get the car up and running before we do that. So uh, stay tuned for that installation at a later date. Well, one of the things I was missing was a brake lamp switch. So uh, this goes down, of course, on the brake pedal itself, or there's a, a bracket there that this affixes to. So this is part number 542371. This is kind of an upgraded uh, brake light switch. It's a little bit more heavy duty than the stock. All right, version. another dress up item, not to everyone's taste, I imagine, but to it's definitely to my taste. This is a round uh, billet shift knob, and you can see this is made by Alexander Racing Enterprises, so ARE, purchased through Moss Motors, part number 234300. I think that'll look good uh, on the car and go well with the theme of my car. So we're going to add this on. A couple of more interior dress-up items. Um, I'd mentioned that I was going to be replacing the escutcheons on the uh, steering column. So this is part number 667495. This is the escutcheon for cars with overdrive. The ones without overdrive don't have the extra opening, so make sure you order the appropriate part number for your car. The other side uh, escutcheon is part number 667505, and this is for all cars. I also got the uh, label, the light switch label, which is just a little stencil that uh, it gets applied to the escutcheon, so we've got that ready standing by. Part number 667 dash. Still going along with the theme of the uh, shifter. We've got a new lower uh, boot. Mine was cracked beyond use, so we've got a new one here ready to go. This is part number 680 730. 
shift boot lower. And this was the real reason for digging all of these parts out. Um, I was looking for the boot hinges, so Moss has sent me a pair of boot hinges. I don't have the part numbers for them. Currently they're just packed in a, a small box. I will look up the part numbers and I'll put them in the description field below. So we've got a nice set of hinges along with the gaskets. So the hinge to lid gasket is part number 698-135. And then we've got the short hinge to deck gasket, which is 698-130. All right, these next parts kind of scare me. Part number 326-115, these are molding clips. So they're basically rivet clips, rivet button clips, I call them. And these are to attach the uh, chrome moldings along the fenders and along the doors. So these have to be affixed with a rivet gun, my nemesis. So we'll be careful when we do that. So that's uh, in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. The other one are, the other ones, are another type of rivet clip and I don't know whether I'll utilize these or not I haven't decided yet these are for the lower body molding now my car did not come with the lower bo body molding that would go on the sill and I haven't decided whether I'm going to go with that or not normally it would be a chrome uh, beading down there or a chrome molding and below that would be black I believe so I kind of like the idea of it, but uh, we'll wait and see whether I apply that or not. I might like the cleaner look without that chrome strip. I haven't quite decided, but at least I have the rivet clips if I decide to put those on. Part number 326-125. So once again, big shout out and thank you to Moss Motors for supplying these parts. You can visit them at mossmotors.com. As mentioned, all of their contact information can be found in the description field below, along with all of the part numbers that I'll be using. So be sure to visit them at mossmotors.com. All right. Let's get to fitting these parts on the car. So believe it or not, I am not going to wet sand this interior of the boot lid. Yes, I said it. I'm not going to do it. I really mean it. So uh, I think it actually looks not too bad. I don't think I can make it much better than this anyway. There's a very small amount of dirt in here, a little bit of orange peel, but uh, that's okay. I'm not embarrassed uh, to show the interior of this trunk lid, even if the trunk is up at a show. Um, plus I can use that as a discussion piece if anybody wants to see what the original paint texture looks like and the original amount of dirt that I get in the panels well I've got something to, to show them that interior support structure goes in there as well which is going to break that sort of flat structural piece up anyway so uh, that's my thinking and we're just going to go with it again the panel is not perfect anyway uh, I'm not trying to hide anything but uh, I think it looks okay just the way it is so not taking any shortcuts, I just don't think it's really going to benefit from a, from a buffing. So, it's going on just the way it is. Alright, the boot lid is all ready to go. We've got the support structure bolted in and we have the hinges on the boot lid itself. And we've got the hardware ready to go for the actual fixing to the body. Now, some idiot put this back panel in the way for me to be able to get to the hinge points easily to bolt them up so that means I'm gonna to have to do it from the inside it's a good thing that the back panel is not on yet um, the problem with that is I'm probably gonna need some help now because I don't want to I was thinking about doing this myself and uh, I don't want to actually have to just sort of leave the boot lid hanging with just the hinges in the holes in case it just starts to pull out and I'm actually inside trying to thread the nuts on the studs and the boot lid falls off the back so it's probably just better for me to wait for maybe less to uh, stop by so we'll uh, have a pass on that for now and hopefully we'll get it on later on tonight if less stops by and we'll move on to something else we're gonna play it smart for a change all right I thought I'd take a quick shot of me uh, applying those uh, numbers to the plug wires and we're on our last one so now is the time so all I've done is I've just made sure that uh, I've got obviously on the right plug wire <laughs> and uh, we're going to orient it so that the number is legible up and all in the same direction. We've located just at the top of the boot. So now we've got our heat gun standing by and we're just going to shrink that. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Shrink that around the boot. like so, so it's nice and smooth. We 
for it to cool down a little bit. Gotta remember to tighten my spark plug before I try to start the car. Should make myself a note of that. All right. So those are on. I'll give you a quick uh, look at them installed. I like it. Maybe it's kind of gimmicky, but uh, I kind of like the look of it. So there you go. Um, I don't know if some of you might recall that I, had, I thought I might have had a problem when I did my initial startup that the rear carb was not firing. Uh, it looked like plugs five and six. And it looks like, and I'm crossing my fingers, this might have been the issue. When I was just uh, redoing my distributor cap and going in the firing order, um, it looked like five and six were out of order, so it's possible those plugs were not firing. So that might have been my issue. So I might have been missing two cylinders on that initial startup. So. Who knows, because the plugs were looked, looked brand new, if you recall when I pulled them out. Maybe I'll put a link to the video if I can find it. But the plugs looked brand new, like they'd not even been firing, so that I think may have been the issue, just those two plug wires being out of the uh, firing order. So, anyway, they are correct now. Well, I'm assuming they're correct. So, all is good. I'll just remember to have to tighten those spark plugs, or we'll get a bit of a shocker when we go and try to start this car. I should start probably making some notes like tighten spark plugs and fill the diff with gear oil because those are things that yet I need to be done. Well, I definitely think those plug wires look better than the red ones. What do you guys think? Better or worse? All right, sorry for the fan noise, but it's the only way I'm gonna be able to work out here is in front of a fan. So we've got all the old and new lights out and we're just doing some comparisons and uh, doing some uh, checks on the wiring for example because obviously the new ones didn't come with the wiring so I'm checking the old harnesses out and uh, we're going to wire up the uh, new connectors or bulb uh, holders uh, obviously the same way that the old ones were wired up so that's what I'm just in the process of doing something uh, simple and not too uh, exhausting so we'll uh, get these like I said swapped over and uh, ready to go on the car. All right, we've got uh, the rubber grommets and the plinths installed on each side. The only problem is I need some of these really smaller J clips. I only have one left from the batch that came off the car. I guess they were pretty rusty. So this is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to try to find some locally tomorrow or the next day to be able to fasten those to the car. I need three per side. And I'll probably get some uh, nicer looking screws. These are what came out of there. I doubt these are stock because they are Phillips screws. So no way that those came out of a stock TR250. So we may actually look into getting the proper screws for these as well. They don't have to go on in any rush. So uh, I'm just happy I've got them rewired and ready to go and we'll fasten them at a later date once we get the correct fasteners. Alright guys, one more panel installed. Les was uh, good enough to stop and uh, give me a hand on his way home from work. So we've now got that installed on the car. It was not easy. Um, having the Surrey backlight on, you know, just temporarily, it made it a little bit more difficult to get to the hinge points and I've already got that steel backing plate on so I couldn't come that way. So I made it a little bit more difficult for myself in order to do those uh, hinge fasteners up. But we got it done and that's all that's important. So it's looking good, it's fitting pretty good. Um, I did take the seal off, we got a little bit of fat seal syndrome. But the gaps look pretty good and the fit's good down the bottom. So happy with that, of course there's no handle in there yet so it's sitting a little bit lower than it should. Obviously no seal in there as well either. So this uh, doesn't look too bad considering it hasn't been um, polished yet or color sanded. So there's a little bit of dirt in it, but not bad. So we're happy with that. I think the fit's going to be good as far as gaps are concerned. I mean, I just stuck it on there. I haven't even really looked at gaps, but they look pretty good. Probably can be shifted a little bit to the right-hand side, but not bad for uh, just sticking it on there and tightening up the hinges. So yeah, happy with that. It's looking pretty good. You can see that. 
this uh, boot lid had a tremendous amount of work done to it if you recall so it's looking pretty good considering what I started with so yeah so we'll um, maybe have to utilize the seal that came off the car we'll play around with that a little bit more there's probably nothing wrong with the seal that came off the car so we may go back with that and uh, see if the uh, the lid fits a little bit better with the old seal in place I believe the seal I got the second seal I got the newer seal was a TR6 seal so uh, it might be a little bit too fat for this application although I think I recall reading that most guys are going to the TR6 seal but I could be wrong the fits definitely better on that newer seal that I got it's sort of a crimp on style versus the other one which will actually need some adhesive to put it on so yeah I'm happy with that so another panel on the car like I said out of the dining room and living room so it's looking good looking really good all right I think we're gonna call it a night out here again super super hot day I think hottest day of the year up here so we were lucky to get anything done at all so we'll uh, continue on tomorrow night after work and uh, we'll figure out what we want to do tomorrow depending on the temperature in the garage we might look for small jobs or for some larger jobs like maybe putting the rest of the interior back in and fixing down this uh, Surrey backlight that would be good as long as I'm happy with the uh, fitment of the boot lid then I can go ahead and do that so as long as I don't have to get back in and tighten or loosen hinges I should be good so maybe I'll work on the boot fitment get that fitting perfectly first before I actually button up the interior in case I have problems all right that's it for tonight guys we will see all right you guys tomorrow. welcome back to the garage now Thursday after work much cooler out here today it's only a hundred Fahrenheit I can't believe these guys across the street are up here doing a roof today they just got to be dying up there anyway uh, I think we're going to continue on with the trunk project the boot project so we managed to get the boot lid on yesterday um, I still have to figure out the seal so we're gonna do that I figured it'd be a good opportunity to get the trunk stay or trunk prop rod whatever you want to call it I've called it a trunk stay there's the original hardware and here's the stay itself and I was just gonna clean this up and give this a quick coat of paint and I think we'll make it looking uh, sort of cadmium looking so uh, I've just scuffed it down with a scotch bright will clean it up with some grease and wax remover and we'll hit it with a couple coats of paint and I'm pretty sure that's going to dry fairly quickly the humidity is about 60 percent so it's not too too bad so we'll do that and while that paint is drying maybe we'll play around with the old seal that was on this trunk and see if we can get that trunk lid to fit as it should the new seal is definitely not going to work so let's do that while right, the paint is drying. The prop rod is in and it's functioning as it should doesn't seem to be as robust as the one in the TR6 but uh, it's obviously functioning it did scratch the paint a little bit but that's inevitable so I think it looks better than it did anyway but you can see that it's gonna rub a little bit there so but it is what it is anyway okay so I guess we can move on to trying to fit that seal now that we can hold the boot lid up so we'll go ahead and we'll do that and see how the uh, lid fits with the old seal all right guys we've got the old seal fitting better so we've gone ahead and we've uh, started laying in some weather stripping adhesive we're just using this from permatex weather strip adhesive so uh, applied to both sides so on the seal and on the body tub waiting for 10 minutes for that to flash off then we'll stick them together and we're going to use some of these uh, clips clamps binder clips um, to hold that in place until it's dry and uh, we'll do it in sections so we'll go to there probably to the middle up and around I did do a little bit of trimming on the inside bottom here just to make the channel a little bit deeper to get this uh, bonnet lid to close in a little bit closer it was sticking out just a touch so hopefully with my surgery with a exacto knife um, I should have made that fit a little bit better that's the hope and that's the plan no going back now all right guys we have that seal glued on now and uh, still have a bit of a stick out on the bottom corners that seals still a little bit too thick for it to uh, 
sit comfortably. Again, the handle is not on either, so the handle is going to pull the boot lid in a little bit as well. So I'm not going to worry about it for now. We're just going to let the seal sit uh, as it is for now and see if it uh, beds in a little bit with the uh, weight of the uh, boot lid on it. Um, and again, like I said, we'll wait and see what it looks like once that handle is affixed. I may need to go back and trim it, but it's not bad, um, but it's not as good as I'd like it to be. Anyway, we're looking for a small project for the evening, so I think what we'll do is we'll grab the tail lights and we will put those in. We'll drag the fan over here and point it at us while we're working just to keep us a little bit cooler. And we'll see if we can get these uh, tail lights in and looking good. All right, guys, just coming up to about 7.30 in the evening, and I think we're going to call it a night out here. We have accomplished what I wanted to get done. The tail lights are now in, so scratch another thing off the list. They look pretty good, I think. They actually fit pretty well. I knew I was going to have a few issues when it came to fitting these. I don't know if you remember on this car, they had a lot of work done on these pockets back here. So in, in retrospect, I probably should have changed the pockets out entirely. But uh, we worked with what we had and made them work. So um, they fit pretty good. I would say the driver's side fits a little bit better than the passenger side. I'm going to have to move the beading up a little bit from the bottom to meet the bottom of the uh, housing. Like I said previously, I didn't know how far I needed to go up with that beading. It's pretty close, but it needs to go up a little bit more. So, I think they look good. They look a lot better than what came off the car. And like I said, the fit's pretty good, nice and tight to the bodywork. Good. I've got to secure that beading a little bit more. Again, I haven't bent any of the tabs of the beading down until I'm certain that it needs to be where it's going to be. So, again, we'll loosen this fender off at the bottom, we'll move the beading up, and then we'll secure it at its final location. All right, I think that's it for tonight, guys. We'll uh, upload what I've got from yesterday and today, and then we'll get back out here tomorrow. And we'll figure out something else to do. Hopefully it'll be a little bit cooler and uh, make it a little bit easier to be out here in the garage. All right, that's it. Thanks very much. Like and subscribe.